Today we're out here at NSRA Disc Golf Course, where I'm gonna be trying to beat the U-Disc leaderboard with my brand new MVP bag. Now, if you didn't see episode number one of this Beat the Leader series, let me bring you up to speed. I shot a seven under par with many birdies left out there, and I bogeyed holes one and two. Yep. <laughs> we're, we're under the basket. <laughs> yep. The current UDIS leaderboard score to beat is an 11 under par, which means my goal for this challenge is to shoot 12 under. Hole one, 635 foot par four, not a ton of danger, smack something stable off the tee, OB deep of the basket. We're going plasma photon, keep it in bounds. Love it, dead center. There's three keys to disc golf, driving, approaching, and putting. We need all three to do this disc sport. What is up guys, welcome back to another episode of the 30 day MVP building the bag series. I'm excited for this one, okay? We got some interesting weather out here today. We got a gap in the rain. Looks like we got two or three hours, but it's windy. And last time I was out at this course, it was perfect scoring conditions. Basically for this upshot, you wanna miss left, the tall pine trees right there. You wanna hyzer into those. It keeps you safe, gives you a little, you know, 15 foot putt. We're going stabilizer. Ugh. Get up there, now sit, money. Take that all day. If you're a member of the Patreon, you would have seen my practice round video out here with the MVP bag, where I tried to dissect or dial in some of the holes that I didn't quite figure out my first time through. So I feel like we have a pretty good game plan here. Obviously we started out bogey bogey on the first round of this challenge. So if we can even just start up par par, that's a, that's a big time win, but uh, maybe birdie birdie to start. We'll see. The wind today is gonna keep things honest. Putting the Adam today, if you saw my last video, heard me talk about these a little bit, Minnesota slide. <sighs> birdie on one, that's how we start. Hole number two, 300 feet, basically an island hole once you get down there. Pretty big though, probably got 40 feet all around the basket. Definitely gonna be windy out there. The stabilizer, kind of flex play where it just pans back down, I think is gonna be the most consistent shot, especially with a windy day like today. Love it. Yeah, that's gonna be really nice. Let's go make a putt. So we're about a third of the way through the series. If you've been following along, you've seen me build out this MVP bag. And now for phase two, you know, days 10-ish through 20th, 20th, 20-ish, we're pretty much gonna be coming out on the course and really trying to, you know, score with these discs. Cause you can take them out, you know, field test them or test them on easy courses and you can do all that. But can you really trust these in situations, you know, where you are really just trying to score well. The thing that also is gonna keep this a little more interesting is the weather here in the PNW is definitely turning. So we are really gonna be putting these discs through the elements and you know, can we play in the wind? Can we trust them in the wind? Can we trust them in the rain? And all that good stuff, which I think goes a long way because on a beautiful calm day, it's a solid player is gonna be able to throw most discs, but can you really trust them when the, the conditions are not perfect. Hole number three, 600 foot par four. Basically, you wanna get it up here on the hillside. Give yourself a look at the basket. We got a pretty strong tailwind. I'm gonna go with the trace, a little bit of an ante, and then hopefully just hold it nice and straight. Now lift, eh. It got pushed down, but that's a decent spot. Solid shot with the trace. Would have liked it to be higher if you can actually crest the hillside. It makes this so much easier. I don't want to be right. I want to make sure I hyzer. So we're going to go stabilizer. Basically try and saw it off a little bit. I actually like that a ton. A little short. That's a scary putt. That's a tricky one because you got to keep it under the tree. But then with the left to right coming through, it's gonna push the flight plate down. I think the stabilizer did all it could do. And it was definitely the right play. A little bit further than I thought we landed. I thought we had like a 20 footer and we got probably about a 33 footer here. I 
feel like the wind on the basket is actually getting blocked. We're basically gonna try and give this like a nice lofty putt. You know, I, f I just, with the lefty putt, with the left to right wind, last thing I wanted to do was sail it and then have a comebacker from in these trees. So we'll take that. We got like a 250 footer here. With the right to left, I wanna fight it with a forehand. I'm gonna go with the resistor. Nice and smooth. Now, Heiser. Heiser, get a little skip. That's a little short. This is a death putt. Oh, okay, that putt was interesting because with the, when I was putting the envies, I really tried to like jam the shit out of them. And that one was more of just like open the hand and let the disc work. And honestly, when I threw it, I thought I missed because I was just like, I didn't feel any pop there but it's actually just really smooth. We're off to a decent start and I am happy because this is how I know I should be able to play on this course. Episode one of this Beat the Leader series was my first time ever at this course. And honestly, I kind of feel like some of the holes were beginner's luck. I shot a seven under starting two over through two, which honestly I feel like is pretty good. You'll see more of this course and it's a very, it, it has, you can birdie every hole, but, and there's some, you know, must have birdies, but there's a lot of bonus birdie type holes out here, which I think makes it perfect for a challenge like this. Hole five, 309. We're going resistor again. The resistor has been one of my favorites and I got one of my beat up used ones back because the new ones are great, but I, I feel like you want a little bit of a push with these slightly beat up ones. They're almost like a mid range that just does a little bit more. Very slow driver. Heiser, I need some ground play. Come on, yes, I'll take that. Well, this makes me very happy because I wasn't quite sure if I got you know back into there, but we stayed really close. We're off to a pretty solid start. 398, par three. Oh my gosh, there's literally a lake down here. I feel like this course, I've seen multiple areas now where it is the fairway and it is flooded completely, like literally ponds. So we're gonna try our hardest not to land in there. Earlier when I mentioned a little bit of like beginner's luck or you know, when you're a little naive to holes, sometimes you play them better, this is one of them. The way I'm playing right now, which is really good, I cannot afford to bogey this. We're gonna take the remix disc Ronin. We're gonna try and hit it on a flex. We're just trying to get down there. I really don't need to get greedy and uh, Get a par, get out of here. Oh my gosh, I freaking love that. Now sit, that's, I don't really know, but that's gotta be somewhere in the vicinity. So this shot is a shot that if someone asks you, hey, will you take this shot every time for the rest of your life? You would 100% say yes. We kinda got this hole a little dialed. Now, can we make a putt? That's the real question. No, that was kind of ugly. Unfortunate miss, but I'll take the par on this hole every single time. I almost missed that. Hole seven, 259, tricky little green. It's pretty much up the hill, tucked right into the trees. You almost want to take your, you know, Firebird-ish disc and kind of just saw it off. We're going to go motion. See how it plays. That might be too high, but if it gets clean. Uh, I almost trickled all the way back down. I could see it from the tee, so to stop here, it's pretty solid. I'm gonna give it the old Minnesota slide. Take an extra inch or so. Just not sure what swing I like better here. I think this one. No, dude. Exaggerate the follow through on shots or on putts like that. This is a tricky one. This is one that I really got to figure out. In my practice round, I took this inertia and I kind of sawed it off nice and flippy and let it push. You see the basket is like tucked deep in the trees way over there. As you can probably tell right now, 
It's very windy. I don't know if this hole plays for a birdie attempt today. I was thinking photon, but I'm even just thinking motion now. Get ourselves in position for an easy par. There's more birdies. Oh, I actually really like that too. It's gonna be deep, deep circle too, but that's a solid shot. See, with the motion bailout, it gets you to here, which is solid. But with the inertia, something that's gonna push and actually fly, that's how it'll kind of get you down actually near the basket. Oh, that almost did something crazy. All right, y'all, this wind is getting crazy. I actually threw the energy in the bag just because I knew I might need it. Once we get back out in the open, made it to hole nine. Short little hyzer with something stable. It is an island, keeps it honest. We're four down through eight holes. We got to pick up the pace, definitely. Um, I felt like we started so good, but this is kind of the, the, the whole point of doing this challenge at this course is the fact that there's these, these par threes that you can birdie, but in conditions like today, and if you're not absolutely dialed on the shots, it's very, you know, low percentage birdies, which is what I love, you know, a thrower's course, where if you really throw well, you're gonna be able to score, but you can't just really scrap your way through it. We're just gonna go stabilizer. Pretty much just wanna cut it around the corner, keep it low. Or really high, but I think that should be actually really good. Yeah. Well, we pretty much got like a 30 mile an hour headwind here. So we're going in the gym range. Spin this thing in. Let's go. Come on. I really hope this was from a storm and not from somebody like thinking this tree shouldn't be here because it makes the hole hard. Unreal. Guys, if you have saw the last video out here, this tree slash pole stands straight up here and basically turns this wide open. There's a lot of danger down by the green shot into a really hard shot. You got to pick left or right and it really closes the gap. This is brutal. Well, I wish it was a calm day because now something like the hex or the echo just dead straight out there plays really well. We're going to go resistor Annie. Pan it back towards the basket. I wanted to go pyro, but I didn't realize this is 324. I thought it was like a little shorter. I just feel like you want to at least cover the distance. Oh, I love that. Now swing. Oh, I just got dropped, but that's a good spot to land. This is where a hole like this gets tricky. The wind is ripping. Absolute death on the left. We're, we're busting out the all in the gym range once again. I'm gonna give it a lofty bid before the wind picks back up. Sit, 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 sit. That was probably dumb, let's go make that putt. See, the worst part about where your disc goes if you miss deep at this basket isn't even necessarily having to make the putt, it's having to get down there. It's slick rock covered in leaves with thorn bushes all around it. So it's like you can make the 15, 20 foot comebacker but getting to your disc is just not worth it. All right, guys, I'm not just waiting out the wind. I'm holding the camera, okay? All right, let's, let's just jam this thing. That was a nice spinner. <laughs> it sucks because we're getting to a few holes where if you got a side hand, you should birdie them. But man, this wind is gonna make it interesting. Interesting. All right, y'all, hole 11, 343. We got a pretty strong left to right, which makes me think I can go a little lower speed with the resistor, hang it out wider, but it's gonna throw it to the right. Otherwise, I'm probably getting launched. Oh, yes. That's so good. That's gotta be parked. So I actually came up, you know, 15 feet short, which I'm very surprised with just because of the, how strong the wind was. doesn't matter when you just ching the shit out of it. <laughs> Little change of the game plan on this one, 356 feet. Normally you would throw the same forehand disc you just threw, 
But with this wind coming off this field left to right, right now I just don't trust the forehand not to launch all the way right. We're gonna go motion backhand, hope that the wind holds it straight and pretty much just try and attack right at it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that's it. Okay, a little bit short, but that was a solid play. Oh wait, is this the play? Damn, that's... Mm -hmm. All right, Minnesota slide. I don't like this left to right. Yes. <laughs> Come on! Full 13, 337. I've been playing, you know, like a buzz assess, hex type shot on this hole. I think I'm just gonna smack the pyro. There's OB deep at the basket, but if you go deep, it doesn't matter because you got like a 10 foot comebacker. Just save your par. Ooh, love that. Come on. Got a little lift? We'll see. All right, y'all, so this actually worked out so well. Got a little putt here. We only got the left side of the basket. And so this tree, I almost gotta do like a, not quite like a beanbag toss, but really got a knife hyzer this. <laughs> Why am I playing so good in the wind? Cause I like the putty, like I haven't made a bunch of like, well I've made some putts, but I feel like throwing in the wind right now and having to just kind of power through with stable stuff almost is making a lot of these shots end up better rather than playing you know like my normal finesse game which is which is bad but i guess it makes sense with discs that i don't know like perfectly and like really well the foot points of the stable stuff is probably going to be more consistent so resistor pyro like type shots are just going to be accurate because you know what they're gonna do. They're gonna be stable and fight the wind. So I guess it kind of makes sense, but I don't know, this is a weird round. Funny thing is too, guys, I've been sick for like the whole weekend, waking up just with aches and chills and like my throat just destroyed. And I wasn't gonna come out and film today, but I just, it's like one of the only pockets of good weather we've had. So I drank a Monsty, slammed half a bottle of Dayquil, and we're out here kind of feeling nice but we got to get done before this shit wears off hole 14 465 par 3 this is probably one of the most bonus birdie holes there ever is going to be obviously tight little gap off the tee the basket is on the right side on a calm day i wanted to come out here and try the forehand and see if i could smack one down there and get a look for two today i know there's going to be a left to right once you get out in the open i honestly think i'm just going to go either motion, resistor, something, you know, stable fairway type, smack it out, pitch up, try and get out of here with my three. I don't think today is the day to try and attack this one for birdie because if you get on to the right side, it's hole six fairway, the absolute swamp that I had to navigate through. And uh, you do not want to be saving a par from down there. Yeah, come on, Heiser, 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 Heiser. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually so good. Why am I getting so hyped right now? We're just gonna take the stabilizer here. Once again, fight the little left to right wind. Oh God. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that could have been bad. Well, this upshot could have been better, but could have gone much worse. So we'll take it. Just jamming them. We are currently eight under par through 14 holes, which means we have to birdie out to win the beat the leader challenge 12 under par we're well as long as we don't fall apart we're already beating round one score or episode one score which i'm super happy about today was a pleasant surprise like i am hyped right now at how well this is actually going even having to just kind of like lay like play some holes simply for par that i would normally on a calm day be playing for birdie we're on hole 15 323, pin this one. Pretty much every, every shot I've thrown on it. Normally, I'd take something, I threw eagle first time, I'd go resistor. But the pure hyzer shot here with the right to left, 
I don't think it's a play. It's gonna launch me left. I think pyro, slight flex, let it fight the wind, but then right at the end, it's gonna start fading, and then the wind is gonna get it the extra distance it needs to actually get to the pin. Maybe overcomplicated. <laughs> Might be overcomplicated, but I like the idea. Oh, yeah. Now wind, just launch it. Come on, what are you doing? Yes, there it is. Uh, well, the pyro actually swung over a little more than I thought. We're in circle. I thought we were maybe 40. We're probably yeah, just at like 30 maybe. I can't believe I just made that, honestly. I'm not gonna lie, I was about to switch back to the Envies because I just felt like I was spinning them better. But now the Adams, I feel like it was just in my head. We'll see. Hole 16, 636, par four. For a side hand player like myself, this hole, this hole plays pretty well. Let's see, we're gonna have a little right to left. I think I'm gonna go energy. Normally I would just go like motion. But with the wind today, I want to bite off a little more distance than maybe the motion would, just to take a little pressure off that second shot. Oh. I don't think I bit off any more distance, but that's pretty much right where I want to land. So we're actually going to go wrath right now. I just feel like I just want to get it there at least because I want a tailwind putt, if anything. Swing. Highs are over. Yeah. I hope I'm parked. I could be short or deep. You can't see the base from here. First appearance for the raft. Didn't know if I could quite trust it. There's a slight little heady here, but I kind of felt like if I just trusted it on hyzer, it's not gonna burn over. I've kind of seen how discs tend to act on this hole. So I felt like I could trust it. Whereas, I wonder how far out this shot is. It's probably right at that like 300 to, 300 to 350. I don't really know. So you can kind of throw like a lot of different discs there, but I felt like the motion or the resistor with the headwind today, just stalling them back, I don't know if I would have got there. Wrath ended up pretty solid. Whew. The putt is, I just gotta, it's, it's weird. I will admit guys, I haven't got much putting practice in lately. Uh, the weather has just been horrible, to be honest. And I know I do need to, I've been sick also, so that, so that kind of sucks. But I do need to learn to putt in these elements because this is kind of what I'm gonna be playing in for the foreseeable you know, next few months. And uh, you can't just like, like, oh, it's windy. Oh, it's raining, not gonna putt because you're probably gonna have to play in it. But these la the last half of this round, I feel, feel the putt clicking again, like I felt it clicking with the, uh, with the envies when I first got my hands on them. One thing that I know changes my putt mindset at least is, uh, what are these called? Disc catchers or these chain stars? Disc catchers. Disc catchers, yeah, it says it right there, are my favorite basket. Are they gonna catch everything? No, you can get some spit, but for the most part, I have all the confidence in the world in just chinging them on these baskets. The rounds I've been playing over at uh, the course with the DGA baskets, they're not the best baskets, so I'm kinda, when I'm there, I'm trying to you know, do a little more of like a smooth putt, adjust the putt which I think throws off my rhythm because I wanna just be a confident spin putter. That's what I want. Confident, hit them hard, jam them in, worry about spit outs later. And on those baskets, I think I revert to like, okay, just kinda loft them in, and then I lose the, the consistent release. Enough, enough putting talk, but you get it. We are currently 10 under par with two holes to go, which is amazing. Unfortunately, the next two holes, this hole might be one of the hardest birdies on the course. And then on a windy day, hole 18 might also be one of the hardest birdies 
It might be one of the hardest birdies on a calm day. We'll talk a little bit more about that hole when we get there. Hole 17, 415 feet. The basket is way down in the woods, kind of on the right side. Plays perfectly for a forehand. With a windy day like today, it's tricky because I would like to go something maybe not super overstable, but today I think I'm gonna go with the energy, smack it as low and as flat as I can get and hope that it just travels forward and then launches right and finds me somewhere near the basket for a look. <sighs> okay, that's, that might not be horrible. Oh my. That was weird. If you guys watched the driver test video, you may have seen me throwing the energy, but then shortly after kind of being like, you know, I don't think this is gonna go any further than like a motion or a fireball. So I don't think I need it. I showed up today, realized it was windy as hell, put it in the bag. Cause I was like, you know, I probably might need this. And the shot I just threw right there, I'm nowhere near parked, but it made me realize that this hole might be a little more doable than you think. Sometimes that's all you need. You just gotta see the shot and realize like, oh, okay. Because I was trying to penetrate low and completely miss the height, obviously. Launched it pretty high. But I think when we get up there, we're gonna have like a circle's edge putt. It made me realize that I think when I come out here on a calm day, I'm literally just gonna be able to throw like, well, honestly, if I had my normal bag, I could probably throw my beat up Firebird here. But uh, on a, the MVP bag, maybe the Wrath Photon, maybe? I don't know, you know, something a little smoother that kind of just pushes forward. We're sitting closer than I thought we were too. There's the basket, there's my drive. When I walk up here now, looking back at the tee, it, it seems not easy by any means, but so much more of a doable shot than when you're looking at it from the tee. For 11 under par to send us into 18 with a chance. If you could see the drop off left to this, or if you're a local, you know, this is, I mean, I guess I could hit a tree, get lucky, but this is either make it or I probably get a bogey. And uh, this, is, this is why we like this course for this challenge. <laughs> ah, that left side trees just didn't allow me to get my normal putt. But we sat, we sat, which doesn't really matter because we're in, unless we ace 18, just so you know, that's what's down there. And it is very downhill. <sighs> Dang it. <laughs> A challenge like this, I feel like isn't meant to be done in two episodes. So like, you can't be mad. But being this close with that drive, oh, that hurts a little bit. All right, guys, so here's the deal. Hole 18 out here. You tee off from basically the buildings you could maybe see off in the distance over the last few holes. And you throw up over this entire tree line right here. In the basket, you can't quite see, but it's out there. And in the past, I was told that you could actually see the basket through the trees. There's a little like cutout, so you could throw directly at it. Whereas now it's so overgrown that you can't actually really, you have to, you're throwing downhill 460 feet, but you actually have to throw up because you have to throw up over the tree line. And it's a very tricky thing. That being said, they had a tournament out here. There were some local pros or the regional pros out here playing and they actually played from this short tee. So I guess if you're a local or just anybody, let me know today because well, I guess I could ace this now and then if we'd shoot 12 down, let's be real, it's probably not gonna happen, but we're 10 under par, so we're obviously not gonna win the challenge. So I'm gonna play this short one because in the practice round, I freaking lost one off of the long tee. That's where I actually lost the patent pending Tesla, RIP to a real one. And uh, you guys let me know, should I play the hole that honestly is like almost a little unrealistic nowadays, it's just not a good hole. But the unfortunate part is that the other option is a lumpy tee pad, wide open, 
honestly, this is still probably like 400 feet. So it's not easy by any means. It almost maybe adds a little more drama to it because up there you can't see the disc. It's just a bad viewing experience. Whereas this is like, hey, Brad, you're, say I made that last putt, I'm 11 under par. Can you pin like a 400 foot hole to secure that 12 down? I feel like it almost maybe makes a little more drama. I also don't know what layout or a what hole slash tee pad they played on the U-Disc leaderboard for the people that have the current record. So you guys, please let me know. But we're gonna throw a shot here. I'm thinking, hmm, we're gonna go trail. Super nice. Oh my God, what if that goes in? <laughs> okay. Thank you. That was really nice. I was, I was like borderline, not gonna take the trail out of my bag because I've thrown some really nice like fan grip, you know, finesse style straight drives with it. But it wasn't holding up. Like I remember that disc holding up for me personally. And I was like, man, this is not what I remembered this disc being. That throw right there gave me hope. But if I were to ching that up, I would have been absolutely nuts. I will say it looks like some of the leaves have fallen since the last time I played that one. So maybe it is a little more viewable, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's not a good viewing experience because you literally can't see the disc come down. So you let me know. <laughs> she won't, wasn't pretty, but she went in. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that, beat the leader. <sighs> Pleasantly surprised with how today went. I know as soon as this day quill wears off, your boy is going to be toasted. But uh, we're feeling good right now. So, ah, oh, this challenge, I love this challenge because I think for a player of my skill level, that, that 12 under number is like so doable with an absolute scorcher. Like you just really got to play well. And this course... I think plays well to my game. I think there's a lot of holes out here I can excel at. And you know, it's, it's not the most challenging course by any means, but it's not easy at all. And this challenge is just super fun. I really enjoy playing this course. Luckily it's like 40 minutes away from where I'll be staying this winter. So it's like kind of one of my like home courses. So I feel like today was a good sign of like really figuring out some of the distances out here again and really kind of dialing in this course a little more than I have had my previous two rounds out here. And uh, man, I'm really enjoying it. It, it. Today was, it gave me hope because I threw some nice shots, made some surprising putts, honestly. I, I just did not expect the putter to feel very good today because yesterday, honestly, just since I switched to these Adams, I've like wanted to love them, but I haven't. Uh, there's a chance I still go pick up like maybe some ions or something with a bead because the bead is just, it's always been the comfort feeling in my hand. Also real quick, I wanna remind you, the Broadbird pre-order most likely ends like tonight, like when you're watching this video. So if you're still interested in a Broadbird, head over to powergrupusa.com, use code BRODRICK10, it's gonna save you a little more, kicks back directly to me as well. Also use code BRODRICK10 on anything else you need over at powergrupusa.com. As far as MVP, MVP does not allow you to discount the products, but I think if you still enter my code, it shows Power Grip that I refer to you and then I still get a kickback for that. Unfortunately, you just don't get a discount on MVP products. But thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. This was a fun one. Uh, gonna be getting out to a lot more courses in the area and really just like playing disc golf with this bag now. Like I said, phase two, I'm excited for it. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for the next one. Thanks for watching, we'll see ya. See you later. <laughs> the wind. Creator of Frisbee Club, the man, motherfuckers. The man, the myth. And right here, I have a Frisbee bag. It holds all my Frisbees, the ones I like.